Tomorrow's the big summit meeting, and ahead of that, Alka Acharya, former member of the National Security Advisory Board, Maruf Raza is back with us. D.S. Rajan is director of the Chennai Center for Chinese Studies. Also with us is Subramaniam Swami, who has strong views on this, president of the Janta Party, and uh, Professor Kashi Ram Sharma is former head of the Department of East Asian Studies at Delhi University. Thank you very much. Uh, let me take your views first, uh, Subramaniam Swami. Do you think this... Uh, you know, China is becoming more and more insecure about being encircled. What is the reason for this sudden, you know, concern that China has, that it's being encircled by Japan, Australia, South Korea, Vietnam, India, America, all working together? Well, first of all, it's, a, it's an article in the, in the People's Daily, which has a long history of writing articles uh, which are analytical from their point of view. It's not necessarily a representative of what the government thinks or what China thinks. So I won't overdraw on that, but I would, would say that uh, China is concerned, uh, will be concerned, and should be concerned, just as we are concerned when they build uh, uh, harbors from Gwadar in Pakistan to Hamantota in Sri Lanka and all the way to Burma, and we call that a string of pearls. So expression of these concerns doesn't necessarily mean anything more than just that. Okay, but, uh, but is, what is the reason for this concern? Maruf, let me get your perspective on this. This whole business of China saying that India is attempting to encircle it. What's the, what's the basis of this, essentially? Honor, uh, for too long, the Chinese establishment had become used to a rather passive approach by uh, officials in South Block here uh, who were carrying out a policy, as some would say, a hangover of Nehru's obsession with not upsetting China post the humiliation of 62. And uh, therefore, even when China, as Mr. Subramaniam Swami is rightly brought out, was bringing a, a string of pearls across India, India's harbors, uh, from Burma on one side to the Gwadar port in Pakistan, which has clearly been set up by China, A, to access the warm waters of the Arabian Sea, more importantly for China to get energy resources shortcutting through Pakistan and going through the Xinjiang region into China. But China has also, as your channel has repeatedly brought out, aggressively covered uh, the space between India and China. They've had a lot of aggressive patrolling. They've tried to confront our patrols. They've shown military posturing. More recently, they had an air land exercise where they even used Sukhoi fighters in the Tibetan region. So with all that in mind, China was expecting India to just lump it. But I think now the aggressiveness in a very subtle way that diplomacy is now putting pressure on China, I think it is a good move without being confrontationist yeah. to send a message to China that we don't need to sort of lie down and take it all, but we have our own ways of making a concert of democracies and concert of countries around China so that China then knows that if any one of these countries that China upsets, for example, China has been having maritime issues with Japan and has always made Japan very nervous. And then you have India and Japan now, the two second and third largest economies of Asia, who are trying to contain the dominance of the dragon, as it were. And I think even the United States would see this as a positive development without India really becoming a full-time American satellite. But the democracies of the world get together and tell China, and that's, so your that's, growth story, your aggressiveness is a good thing, but up to a point. Okay, so Alka Acharya, isn't that the true new reality, that China is trying to be established its hegemony in this region, whether it's Ceylon or Bangladesh or Myanmar, and we are responding by saying that it's high time Beijing understands we are ready here for eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball strategic, you know, uh, battle if required. We are not going to shy away from it. It's a new and assertive India in that sense. Dr. Acharya. Well, you know, I think uh, what we are talking about here is a matter of perception. Uh, we are looking at certain things from our point of view, just as this current article, which is now the, uh, the focus of our discussion, uh, is a perception from China. And whose perception, uh, as was pointed out in the beginning? I mean, we, we should understand whose perception are we talking about? Is uh, one commentator here and one commentator there or a set of strategic perceptions on either side which do not necessarily uh, become official policy or a neat 
cut and dried case for intentions on either side. I think you have a large number of statements from both leaders which are talking about mm. their being enough space, they're talking about competition, but within managed limits, they're that's, talking that's about diplomatic the need talk. for greater and greater. So, that's diplomatic well, talk. Well, this then is strategic. No, that's okay, diplomatic so talk. talk. That, that's diplomatic niceties. Right. And, and, and then this is strategic talk. So strategic talk will take hawkish postures or it will take uh, perceptions to the kind of uh, logical limits but where it Dr. goes. Acharya, so it's, you know, Dr. Acharya, my question is, and, and I, I want to go across to... Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Rajan on this. Can we, uh, Mr. Rajan, look the other way and pretend there is no fight for influence between India and China in the whole East Asian region? Isn't that a reality as well? I think I, I will first, uh, I will first take, uh, make some comments on this particular article. I join with others in noting that the article does not reflect the official opinion in China. We have to make a clear distinction between official opinion and opinions expressed in the articles. Secondly, the article has come closely after PM's Japan visit. Thirdly, the article has appeared prior to President Obama's scheduled visit to India. And I have always, I have also found the accusations are old. China had accused in the past of US, Japan and India networking which can, which can suffocate India. So uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we have to look at, uh, we have to, uh, as far as the significance of this article is concerned, these words will be enough. Uh, uh, I think there is definitely, but it, it does not mean to deny that there is some concern, there is existence of some concerns on the part of Beijing towards the developing situation, particularly but Asia, why would we want to underplay like those India. concerns? No, I, I, an article would not appear in the, this article by Li Hongmei would not appear in the People's Delhi if it, if it was completely against the point of view of the Chinese government, would it? Subramaniam Swami, okay, it's not the well, official it. line, but it's not against the official line either. Yeah, the, you uh, don't have to uh, tec technically, black and white. Uh, it may not be, uh, they certainly will not allow People's Daily to publish something which is totally against the government view. But this is not against the government view. This is not, neither for the government view nor against the view. They are expressing a view that in, uh, there, there's an encyclo encirclement. That's a new development. India is for the first time. I'm happy that we are breaking the old Nehruvian fixation with Europe. And now looking east, and Mr. Manmohan Singh has done very well on this, and naturally China is taking notice. But I don't think this is, amounts to uh, a warning or anything of that kind. They are, they are warning their own people that, look, India is developing relations in all this area, and they've got something to worry about. After all, their economic uh, lifeline is East Asia. If East Asia stops exporting uh, semi-processed goods to China, which China then processes and say, uh, exports it to Europe and the United States, China will be finished. If supposing tomorrow Japan and the, uh, Taiwan and all these countries decide to send the semi-process exports via India, well, what will happen to China's foreign exchange reserves? They will all evaporate. So they have a concern and they are expressing it and I don't think we should be unduly excited about it. My question to Professor Kashiram, Kashiram Sharma is, I'm sorry for coming to you so late. Professor Sharma, tell me, should we become an easy participant in the American game? This is not just Indian game to encircle China. It's an American game as well. Should we become such a willing participant in this whole big global game that's going on? I, I, I will say two points. Number one, India is improving its relations with America. The whole nation agreed. I'm happy. It's an occasion to celebrate. India is not a banana republic. India is nobody's ally. India is emerging. My second comment is, I, I will look at China in three ways. China is a friend, is a collaborator to a certain extent. China is a competitor. And ultimately, I don't agree with Acharya, ultimately I look at China as a conflictual relationship with India. Mm. We have to keep these three dimensions in mind. I repeat, to a certain extent we have to collaborate with them, culturally, economically, commercially. Or when Uncle, Uncle Sam gives me a pinch, 
I would like to have some kind of understanding with China. Secondly, China is my competitor, serious competitor. China is my economic competitor, China is my diplomatic competitor, even China is my ideological political competitor. I would like to tell my Chinese friend, if you want to go democratic, please learn few lessons from India. Right. And finally, finally, although many people say that there is enough scope for both of us to emerge, and people use the words India, China plus India, but personally I am of the opinion that beyond a point, I am of the opinion that beyond a point, India's relations with China are of a conflictual character. Conflictual character. Uh, the, then the, that the, conflict has not arrived today. Hmm. I should not be misunderstood. That conflict may arrive, maybe after 20 years, may not arrive, but I'm not so positive that it will not arrive. Yep. I, I mean, China is talking like a hegemon. Absolutely. Who has given this right to China that India should not look east? Yep. China is talking to Ceylon. Yes, China is. is talking to Myanmar. China yes. has a special relation with Pakistan. Yes. China is very pally with Nepal. I have not told China that you, 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 you lo get lost. Therefore, why China should give me a lesson? That China is telling me that China has a sphere of influence in that part of the world. If it is a sphere of influence story, then I am afraid it smells colonial. Well, Professor Sharma, you put your views very strongly, and we know the Chinese put their views very strongly. You made a few observations to what uh, Dr. Alka Acharya said. I want Dr. Alka Acharya to respond to that. Because, you know, there is a strong feeling, it emerges all the time, that vis-a-vis -vis China, we want to get lost in generalities. We don't want to be specific. We don't talk, want to talk about a strategic battle that's emerging, a global sphere of influence. We want to be evasive and defensive. That's the general view, Dr. Acharya. No. Now the time has come to be direct about China. Which China? No, I, uh, look, uh, I am not at all debating or contesting the fact that there are strong opinions on either side regarding the strategic ambitions or the strategic nature of this relationship. There are strong views. There are equally views which reflect other, pos other positions. Now, my point is that we are trying to make news here or are we trying to make sense of what is being what is happening we want a, a discourse on the strategic nature of this relationship by all means let's explore all the possibilities and let's go along realistic not so realistic what are the possibilities and let's examine the kind of range of options india has to deal with what is seen as a strategic challenge on the other hand we are talking i mean we can't just keep on saying there is collaboration also there's competition also but fundamentally what is the nature of this relationship if we are saying that there is a conflictual aspect and this is bound to take us in a certain direction. I, I'm not so certain whether, you know, we need to go along such kind of self-fulfilling prophecies uh, all the time. I think if we are consciously fashioning a relationship which is taking a collaborative role as the linchpin of the new order in Asia, and if we are trying to say that both India and China will, if Go, go, if, if they go on this conflictual path, will inevitably mess up any chances no. that Asia has to emerge. Then, then we are, then, then we have. Well, we, we but what we are saying else. here. But if we are. What we are saying here, Dr. Acharya. No, what you are saying here is, what you are saying here is that these are competing hegemonies and that these are going to inevitably clash. And my point is that if we are looking at this framework, then by all means, as I said, let no, us my question was take this. this argument to its logical. No, my question was this. There is a reality. I think Professor Sharma puts it very candidly. There is a reality. There is competition between India and China on the economic front. What we are talking about tonight on the news are ahead of that big visit, vi meeting between Wen Jiabao and Man Dr. Manmohan Singh is that strategically there is also competition emerging. We are siding with the Americans. I am not. The, I, I was only questioning whether that's the right thing to do or whether we are going blindly no, into the solution. I am not solution. questioning. No, I am not questioning a reality. As I said, reality can oh, be no. perceived differently. There are different perceptions. If there is a reality which is showing you that these yeah. are competing yeah. hegemonies, there is another reality, a bigger reality, which is showing us that these are not necessarily going on a conflictual okay. path. I'm getting Competition responses. need not be conflict. Okay. Uh, Dr. Acharya, very articulate points of view. I don't think Professor Sharma is agreeing with you. Oh, no. I'm now going to take reactions. Maru wants to respond. Mr. Dr. Rajan, just coming to you after that, and I can see Subramaniam Swami's 
is also getting charged up to respond to some of the points. First, Maruf, go ahead. Maruf, how plain on, should we be a, with the Chinese I, I tomorrow? Like to uh, yeah, on, a, on a, my responses to Dr. Alkacharya's points are as follows. Firstly, America and China, look at their case study. They're both cooperating and they are in conflict with each other in terms of space, in terms of where China sees the mandate of heaven leading Beijing and how China sees it, the possibility of trying to dominate the world 25 years down the line. You go to Washington, talk to any policy analyst, and he's pretty obsessed with what China's thinking and what China's yeah. doing. The second point which I want to bring out is as far as India is concerned, let's hope this time Dr. Manmohan Singh really stays the course with our East Look East policy. In earlier occasions, ASEAN countries have been a bit disappointed that India looked east and then began to look west again. That's true. So this time, I think that's the issue at hand. Okay, the third Maru. point, which uh, Dr. Sharma did, uh, or no, the last point that Dr. Sharma did bring out, please, we must understand that because the two nature of the political systems being different, China being a totalitarian system, ours being an open democracy, we are obviously going to be at conflict in principle in terms of how we approach the world. And, and therefore, that, the concerns that, the People's Daily has been highlighting is pretty much the concern of Beijing, whether people say it's the mouthpiece I, I, or not. I know, from what little I know, people don't write in China things which Beijing doesn't approve. Well, that, on that, that, that point takes me to Mr. Rajan. Mr. Rajan, you were saying that, that this is not the view of the, uh, of the government of China, but this would not be against the view of the yes, government of China either? Uh, first of all, I, 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 I retain the position that uh, it does not reflect the government opinion. Uh, I, I, just, uh, I just want to add up to the discussions which, which, which has so far been going on. India should not be seen as ganging up against China. It is not in our interest. We should not. Secondly, uh, China is showing two faces to India. One is diplomatically a very, very uh, genuine, it's a very uh, warm face towards India. But in strategic matters, it is speaking in different language. Even in actions, uh, it is uh, acting differently, particularly um, uh, on, the, uh, on China is being seen as uh, departing from its uh, uh, traditional neutral stand on Kashmir, etc. So, the, we have to, so what, what we have to do is, I think, we have to engage China, but at the same time, we should take care in protecting our strategic interests. Okay, uh, I, I, want, I want Subramaniam Swami, I'm coming back to you, uh, uh, Professor Sharma, for the last word. Subramaniam Swami specifically respond to the point being made here by Mr. Rajan. It is not in India's interest, he says, to be seen to be ganging up. Ganging up is the word he used against Beijing. In fact, it is. Yeah, with whom can we uh, gang up? The Americans are not going to uh, are not going to agree to gang up with you against China. We are heading for a triangular relationship in the world. Uh, in another ten years, the three most uh, the three largest GNPs will be India, China, and the United States. The three most uh, populous countries of the world will be India, China, United States, and we should try to work out a triangular relationship. Uh, I don't think the Americans will ever agree to gang up with you against China. And I don't think we need to gang up with China to, against the United States. We need to work out a stable equilibrium in the world uh, with the three of us coming to some understanding on basics. Yeah. As far as China and India is concerned, for 2,000 years we never had a problem. And this is complete contradictions, uh, contradiction with uh, what, uh, what we saw in Europe where every two neighbor fought uh, like cats and dogs, but uh, we had a stable relationship. Right. So I think we right. can have a working relationship with China and we should strive on that right. without being euphoric on one uh, end True. and uh, uh, very pessimistic at the other end. Right. We right. My, last, my last question goes the to the most experienced person on the panel, the Professor Sharma. The global powers of the world in the future. Right. My, my last question is to Professor Sharma. Your response to the point, you know, America, people, your Barack Obama will try and tell us when he comes here to work with America in serving America's strategic interests here. Mr. Rajan says that is not in our interest, it's in Washington's interest. Uh, I, I, will, I will say well, I, I only two things, not even two. In fact, I will say only one and a half thing. India is not anybody's ally. India is not a running dog of the Americans. India is independent power. China knows it. Secondly, other day I was with a group of Chinese professors. I was debating with them. And I put a question to them. Who, who threatens China's security? Who threatens you? Are you feeling threatened from America? They said no. 
I asked them, are you feeling threatened from India? They said, no. This whole bogey of containment of China is, is a bogus bogey, believe me. And let us be realistic in this country. Let us be a little bit more realistic. Unless India acquires more power, unless India improvises its, its skill to negotiate, unless diplomatically we throw our weight around, China will not take us seriously. That's important. The moment India improves its diplomatic skill, I'm sorry to say publicly, we Indians are very emotional. Chinese are very calculating. In China, negotiation is taught in the colleges. True. Negotiation is an art. True. This art emerges from strength. It emerges from diplomacy. Therefore, in one sentence I will say, let's not feel panicky. Okay. Let us assure, let us be sure more about ourselves. Let us strengthen our wits. Let us strengthen the material base of our power. Let us strengthen our soft power. China is obsessed with the hard power. In international politics, the hard power alone does not matter. True. Soft power is equally important. True. Well. And finally, don't be worried. Finally, don't be worried. Okay. Well, Pro Professor Sharma, you've said it all. And I think we've all, uh, we all respect your experience and also the experience of all our panelists. We have different points of view. I want to tell our viewers live coverage of the Wenjia Bao. Manmohan Singh meeting is coming to you on this channel live from Hanoi all the day tomorrow. Srinjoy Chaudhary is reporting live from there. I'll see you again tomorrow. Same time with that story and much more on the news hour. Good night. Goodbye. Articles uh, which are analytical from their point of view is not necessarily a representative of what the government thinks or what China thinks. So I won't overdraw on that, but I would say that... Uh, China is concerned, uh, will be concerned, and should be concerned, just as we are concerned when they build uh, harbors from Gwadar in Pakistan to Hamantota in Sri Lanka and all the way to Burma, and we call that a string of pearls. So expression of these concerns doesn't necessarily mean anything more than just that. Okay, but, uh, but is, what is the reason for this concern? Maruf, let me get your perspective on this. This whole business of China saying that India is attempting to encircle it. What's the, what's the basis of this, essentially? On a, uh, for two, the space between India and China, they've had a lot of aggressive patrolling. They've tried to confront our patrols. They've shown military posturing. More recently, they had an air land exercise where they even used Sukhoi fighters in the Tibetan region. So with all that in mind, China was expecting India to just lump it. But I think now the aggressiveness in a very subtle way that diplomacy is now putting pressure on China, I think it is a good move without being confrontationist yeah. is to send a message to China that we don't need to sort of lie down and take it all, but we have our own ways of making a concert of democracies and concert of countries around China so that China then knows that if any one of these countries that China upsets, for example, China has been having maritime issues with Japan and has always made Japan very nervous. And then you have India. Long the Chinese establishment had become used to a rather passive approach by uh, officials in South Block here uh, who were carrying out a policy, as some would say, a hangover of Nehru's obsession with not upsetting China post the humiliation of 62. And uh, therefore, even when China, as Mr. Subramaniam Swami is rightly brought out, was bringing a uh, string of pearls across India, India's harbors, uh, from Burma on one side to the Gwadar port in Pakistan, which has clearly been set up by China, A, to access the warm waters of the Arabian Sea, more importantly for China to get energy resources shortcutting through Pakistan and going through the Xinjiang region into China. But China has also as your channel has repeatedly brought out, aggressively covered. Uh... Tomorrow's the big summit meeting and ahead of that, Alka Acharya, former member of the National Security Advisory Board, Maru Praza is back with us. D.S. Rajan is director of the Chennai Center for Chinese Studies. Also with us, Subramaniam Swami, who has strong views on this, president of the Janta Party. And uh, Professor Kashi Ram Sharma is former head of the Department of East Asian Studies at Delhi University. Thank you very much. Uh, let me take your views first, uh, Subramaniam Swami, do you think this uh, 
you know, China is becoming more and more insecure about being encircled. What is the reason for this sudden, you know, concern that China has, that it's being encircled by Japan, Australia, South Korea, Vietnam, India, America, all working together? Well, first of all, it's, a, it's an article in the, in the uh, People's Daily, which has a long history of writing articles. And Japan now, the two second and third largest economies of Asia, who are trying to contain the dominance of the dragon, as it were. And I think even the United States would see this as a positive development without India really becoming a full-time American satellite. But the democracies of the world get together and tell China, and that's your so that's growth story, your aggressiveness is a good thing, but up to a point. Okay, so Alka Acharya, isn't that the true new reality, that China is trying to be established its hegemony in this region, whether it's Ceylon or Bangladesh or Myanmar, and we are responding by saying that it's high time Beijing understands we are ready here for eyeball to eyeball strategic, you know, uh, battle if required. We are not going to shy away from it. It's a new and assertive India in that sense. Dr. Acharya. Well, you know, I think um, what we